It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Mac Pack Budapest professional athlete for hockey, Catherine Kinley. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to start playing professional hockey? Yeah, so um, I played hockey all the time I was growing up. And then um, I had the privilege of playing college hockey in the States. And um, I knew in my senior year that I wasn't done. And I wanted to continue to keep playing. So um, I started reaching out to European teams so I could continue uh, my career in a professional manner um, in Europe. What was your college time playing at RIT? Um, it was so much fun. Like anybody who I can talk to and I can tell them to take the chance to play college hockey, I would definitely tell them to do it. Um, it's like a really, really cool experience to get to get an education at the same time as um, like living with your best friends and getting to spend every single day with them. I mean, you get an education and you also get the chance to build relationships that are going to last a lifetime and you learn a lot of life skills from college sports, I think. What were some of your biggest accomplishments during your college time? Um, we had a couple. Um, we had a, one really big win. Uh, I think it was my junior year. We beat BU. So that was one of our biggest accomplishments. Any win, I would really say, was an accomplishment for us. Um, I think that I grew a lot as a player throughout my college career and I came a lot more... Um, I guess, like, responsible for my own actions and uh, mature as a player and everything. So I think all those are accomplishments. What was it like getting to put on that RIT jersey? Uh, That was definitely a huge privilege for me. As, like, playing college hockey was always something that I wanted to do. And to get to be able to put on a Division I jersey was really big for me. Can you talk about, of course, what that was like going from playing college hockey to going internationally and playing? professionally yeah so um I I went to Sweden my first year after um college hockey and like I said I think I developed a lot as a player throughout my four years at RIT um so I didn't by my senior year I felt most confident in my play and my skills and my hockey IQ and everything so by the time I got to um Sweden I didn't feel the jump was too hard for me to get into the professional level at all and I think I've just continued to develop over the past couple years as well what was it like, obviously, playing in Sweden and playing the teams in Sweden? Um, I played in two different leagues in Sweden, so it's kind of um, different. But I definitely think that my second year in Sweden and the SDHL was really cool to get to play. There's a lot of Olympians in that league, and there's a lot of players who play at the highest division. So that was really cool to get to play um, people from around the world who play on the top division of their country. What was it like playing for the HK, the Callan H? Okay. Uh, that was fun. That was my first year in Sweden. So um, I got to experience living abroad for the first time. Um, I guess living alone more so than I was at RIT because um, Rochester was only about two hours from my hometown. So I had my parents there anytime I needed them. But moving across the world, Sweden was a big jump for me. So I got to, again, develop more as a person and maturity wise. And I got to continue to play hockey. So it was a really good experience for me. How did that feel to sign your first professional international contract? It was a really cool feeling. I was excited to, uh, like I said, continue my hockey career and continue to grow as a player and get better with every practice. So um, signing my first pro contract was exciting for me. And I was just super excited to get the season started and step on the ice abroad. Of course, what was it like getting to put on that Eek Eek Sands jersey? Um, so that was my second year in Sweden, which was the highest level in Sweden. So that was really big for me to, um, get to play in that level. And the first time I put it on, I was super, super excited again to get started my, my season there and to, again, like develop my, my skill set even more, my hockey IQ and get to play with some of the top players from the Nordic countries. What was the transition like from going from the Sweden league to obviously the league that you're at now? Um, I would say it's, it's different in a couple ways, but. I think that I'm still the same player no matter where I'm playing. Um, Obviously, like, no matter where I'm playing, there's always going to be, like, a language barrier and um, as as long as I'm in Europe. 
but I think that for the most part, it's been pretty similar for me. I get to live with international players as well. So I get to live with players who are from Canada. I've done that every year and um, we get to play in Europe. So it's really cool. What did it feel like to obviously get to sign that contract with the Mac Budapest? Um, that was really exciting for me. I have some friends who have played here previously and um, one of my teammates was here last year. So, and she's here again this year. So I was really excited to get the chance to um, live with one of my old teammates and um, to just continue my career in Europe and to continue playing professional hockey. How did that feel to get to put on that blue Mac jersey? It was exciting for the first time, for sure. It's still exciting. I love playing games. So every time I get to pull the jersey over, I'm excited to get started with a game and see what happens. What was that feeling like the first time you got to put on the jersey and have your name on the back of it? It was exciting. And um, it's always a privilege no matter where I'm playing to be a part of a team. The atmosphere and getting to represent a team on the ice is very important to me. What are some of your biggest accomplishments during your time at the MAC Budapest? Uh, we've had some, we're still in season, so um, we haven't hit playoffs or anything yet. But I think for the most part this season, we've done a pretty good job um, of being a, a high ranked team. We've had some big wins over um, some rival teams. So that's been really huge for us lately. And hopefully we can continue on with winning and we can do something big this playoff season. What does a typical game day look like for you? Um, depending on the time of the game, um, it really differs. If I have a morning game, usually I'll just wake up. No matter what, I'll wake up and I'll have myself a good breakfast, something that'll get me um, fueled for my day. If it's a later game, I like to go on a walk and get my legs moving. Um, if it's an early game, my walk to the rink was, will do that for me. But um, for our last game, it was at 7 p.m. So I went for a walk around one, got my legs moving, got myself a coffee, just take some time to myself, get ready and focus for the game. And then I'll go to the game and just do your regular stuff. I'll have my coffee, do my warm ups, all that kind of fun stuff. Of course, playing internationally. Have, have you noticed that obviously some of the former NWHL players come over to the international level and what that is, what is that like for you to get to play them when they were on the national level? Um, it's cool to get to play with those players. It's, a lot of them are my teammates this year. So um, a lot of the girls who play in that league, I've played with many of times. Um, some of my college teammates play in that league and like I said, some of my current teammates. So it's, it's cool to get to play with them and to hear about their experiences in that league. And um, I guess it's cool to like see what their level is compared to like the level that we're playing at now and see how everybody fits in. What is that like obviously getting to play some of your former teammates at RI that are now playing professionally internationally? It's cool. I haven't really gotten the experience so much to play any of my um, RIT teammates in Europe, although a lot of the ones who do still play, um, there's a couple in the NWHL and one of them talked to my teammate here in Budapest, which is really cool. Um, but I have gotten to face a lot of my previous opponents from college hockey and um, the SDHL and here at the EWHL. So it's cool to play someone in the college level and then again, face them somewhere that's across the world. What are some similarities and differences, obviously, in playing internationally in the CDHL versus obviously the PHF? Um, I guess the biggest difference for me, again, is there's always going to be a language barrier when you're playing in Europe which is, it's not a big deal, really. You would think it might be more than it really is, but a lot of coaches here are really good about speaking English. And um, if you don't understand the drill, when they'll draw it up, they'll draw it up for you again, and they'll explain it again in English. So that's really, really helpful for us. Um, I guess the biggest thing about the PHF would be um, getting to live close to home if you're from someone who's from North America. So I'm sure that's um, a privilege that they get to have, but I think that living here is really cool to get to experience the world and we get to live here for free. So not many people can say they've lived in Europe for free. What is that like, obviously, getting to travel the world and live in Europe while playing hockey? Um, it's really fun, actually. I've had a, I've been grateful, and um, I've had a lot of time to travel so far this season with international breaks and everything. So I've had the chance to see um, places like Vienna and Prague and Paris. So that's really, really awesome. Um, in my previous years, I've been to Copenhagen and London. So as this is my third year in Europe, um, I'm just kind of crossing stuff off the list right now and it's really cool to get to come over here and traveling within Europe once your hair is so accessible and it's it's so affordable so it's really cool to be here and to be able to take time off um, when we're given it to travel and see the world. Of course when you first got into the league what was it like obviously being able to switch from playing American hockey to 
international hockey? Um, I think it was a pretty easy switch for me. Um, everybody was always super welcoming, no matter what team I've went to, um, whether it be in Sweden or here in Budapest, everyone's always been very welcoming to me. And um, coaches, again, are very, very open and easy to talk to. And it's been a very easy switch for me, no matter where I've gone to. What is the feeling like, obviously, getting to see some of your fans wear your jerseys and ask for your autograph? That's always a good feeling. Um, I got to experience it my first time at RIT, and um, that's something that RIT is really good for, is getting the fans involved with um, autographs and selling jerseys and all that kind of stuff. It's, it was really cool to experience it for the first time, and since then, it's always it's always a, an honor to see somebody who wants to represent my jersey and who would love to get an autograph from me. What are some of your game day routines and rituals once you hit the ice? Um, Once I hit the ice, I try just not to stress so much about the game and worry or any kind of clear my mind. Once I'm on the ice, I know I'm going to, it's time to perform and I have to put anything else aside and focus on my game. And I just try not to get it in my own head. And if it's, if it's a bad game, I always try to stay calm. And if it's a good game, again, I try to stay calm and just go with the flow and always stay focused on the game and keep my outside life out until the game's over. Of course, do you have any rituals such as putting on the left skate first, the right skate second? Uh, yeah, like I always take my stick before games. Um, I always have, I always take some pre-workout before a game, get some caffeine in my body. Um, yeah, I always put my left skate on first, left to right, tie them left to right. Um, that's pretty much it, I think. For equipment wise, I always put my equipment on the same way, but I think I put it on the same way everybody else does. So that's not very interesting. But yeah, definitely I, I put on my left and then my right, and then I tie left and then right. What is it like getting to play with some of your teammates like Nicole? Um, it's a really cool experience to get to play again, like overseas and, and to live with some of these international players because. Um, when we do get that time off, we develop such a great friendship because we're living together and we're spending every day together at the rink. It's the same as college hockey where um, you live with these people and you spend every single day with them. You're practicing with them. You're working out with them. We eat our meals together. And then we do get the time off to travel. We get to travel the world together. So it really builds like a really strong connection between each other. And I know that like the people that I've met here are going to be some people who are present for the rest of my life so it's a really cool experience for me what are some of your future plans in your professional hockey career um I think I'm just taking it year by year right now um I love playing professionally and I know hockey is something that I don't want to give up so uh, I'm just going to keep continuing to play until um something comes up whether it be my career whether it be family life we'll see but right now I know I want to keep playing and I want to I want to continue my career and whatever's next for me We'll see what happens. What are some of your favorite memories while playing internationally? Um, definitely, like I said, the chance to travel. Um, I've gotten to see some beautiful places around the world I never thought I would be able to see. Um, I got to see the Eiffel Tower and go up it with uh, Nicole, my teammate. Um, so that's really cool. That's something that I'll definitely never forget. Um, just everything about, about Europe. Um, I'll never forget, like, everywhere I've lived and all the teammates that I've met. Um, it's all, it's all so cool for me. What advice would you have those college hockey players looking to play college hockey? Um, my advice for college hockey is soak it all in while you have it. It goes by so fast. I know four years seems like a really long time, but once you're in it day by day, it just goes by so fast and just soak it in and don't stress it. Play your game. Don't overthink. Um, just like enjoy the time with your teammates, get your schoolwork done. And um, it's so much fun. What advice would you give those college hockey players that are looking to go play professionally, whether it's the NWHL, PWHPA, or internationally, like how you did? Yeah, um, I would definitely say go for it. Like um, playing hockey is something, if you're at the college level, it's probably something you've been doing for a really long time. And if it's, if it's something I know for me as a little girl, it was always my dream to play professional. So if it was your dream to chase it and um, real life can wait, we have our whole lives to do our real life work and to get a job and all that kind of stuff. So right now we have the resources and we have the bodies for it and the time you might as well play professional hockey and follow your dreams and enjoy your time. Who are some people that you look up to in the hockey community? Um, I definitely look up to a lot of the players who were playing when I was really young, um, I'm Canadian. So a lot of the, the big names in Canadian hockey, um, like Haley Wickenheiser, so on, so on, they're all 
big names who I've always had the opportunity to watch on um, the national stage, whether it be like Olympics or um, like, I forget what it's called, like, like international tournaments, anything along those lines. Um, it's always, it was always something I would watch as a kid. Now I'd be like, I just want to be like that when I grow up. So um, definitely all the big names from Canadian hockey, Canadian women's hockey, when it would be like 2000s and all that stuff. What advice would you give future international hockey players looking to play internationally? I would say do it. Um, like I said, it's not, not many people from North America can say they got to live in Europe for free. Um, it's, it's super cool. You get to meet so many cool people. You get to learn cultures. You get to learn. There's so much more of the world than just where you live. And um, I've had the opportunity to learn so much about um, different lifestyles, different countries, so on, so on, um, different styles of hockey, different coaching methods. I don't, it's just really cool to be able to um, see the world on a budget, I guess, when you're our age. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Uh, my social media, I just have Instagram and Twitter. Um, they're both um, at kkennedy1136. And yeah, that's it. Thank you again, Catherine Kennedy, for your interview. And best of luck in your future with the Mac Budapest internationally. Thank you very much. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk Instagram and Brandon Sports Talk Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Catherine Kennedy, for your interview and best of luck in your future. Thank you very much. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.